This Start. conference will now be recorded. So, so hi everyone. My name is Kathleen. I'm one of the moderators for Sarcoidosis Online Support Group. Frank is also um, here with us. How is everybody doing this evening? Well, the T level. Doing great. Excellent. So I have missed the past two meetings, but I have heard all about them. I did not actually watch the videotape. So I'll just give you um, a quick thing about myself, and then um, I'd like to go around the room so that we can introduce ourselves, because I have not met everybody here yet. So as I said, my name is Kathleen. I live on Long Island in New York. I have been diagnosed with sarcoidosis uh, multi-organed at this point for 11 years. Um, the reason why I was not here the last meeting is I had a PET scan and it kind of kicked my rear end, so to speak. Um, it's taken me more than a week to try to come back to somewhat of a normal, if that makes sense. So uh, sarcoidosis, I have it everywhere except for my kidneys and my eyes at this point. Um, at 55 years old, it's not something that I wanted to do, go out on disability and things like that, but it is what it is. Um, I'm part of the Sarcoidosis Long Island, also stronger than Sarcoidosis. I'm part of the FSR as an ambassador. Yes, I still call myself an ambassador. So I still do work with that. Um, so I'd like to go around the room if that's okay. Kevin, would you be so kind to go next? Sure. Uh, my name's Kevin. I live outside of Philadelphia. I've uh, been diagnosed with sarcoidosis for over 10 years, although probably had it closer to 40. Um, originally, lymph nodes, lungs, pretty much a non-issue. Stayed that way for almost a decade. And then in January this year, I had a motor vehicle accident that was minor and wound up in the hospital with AFib and heart issues and two months later was diagnosed with cardiac sarcoidosis had an emergency icd implant to try and get me ahead of the pandemic that was coming and it's been a wild ride for the rest of 2020. Um, trying to get my doctors aligned and herd the cats and figure out you know what else has happened since the accident because my symptoms <clears throat> went from like a one or two like fatigue and a little bit of depression to like off the charts, chronic fatigue. Um, and when you started adding all the medicines, it just went crazy. So it's been a, it's been a rough ride this year, but things are stabilizing. I'm having more good weeks than bad, uh, working on my exercise and un untangling the chronic fatigue. So I had a good week this week, was down the shore fishing and crabbing and having fun. And, um, and that usually takes me a day or two to recover. <laughs> I'm so, glad you had fun, though. I'm glad you yeah, were it was out. a beautiful day out on the water. It was uh, just what just what I needed. That's fantastic. I'm glad. And thank you once again for joining us. You're always such a a good presence here in this room. So thank you, Lisa. I don't think I've met you. Have I yet? No. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. I haven't met anybody. This is the first time I've gotten on. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I knew I found out about this just through the Facebook group. I didn't even really know what it was, but um, I have been dealing with sarcoidosis since. We got two leases. Yeah. Oh, sorry, is there somebody else that's supposed to go? No, no. you. I, I want you, Lisa, <laughs> the one that's talking with the mask on. Okay. I'm sorry. Did I sorry, speak Lisa over D. somebody? No, I was actually speaking to you, but I didn't notice Lisa D down there. Can I call you Lisa D? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, that scared me. I was like, oh, I hope I'm not being rude, and I just screwed up somebody's intro. <laughs> so, okay. So you, you met us on the uh, online? on. Yeah, I saw it sometimes oh, through other support groups. Excellent. How long have you had sarcoidosis? I have been diagnosed since 2016 lymphatic and then 2019 pulmonary. I just got like, you know, the worst news I've gotten so far. 
I went through two rounds of regular doctors before I got to the U of M in Minnesota that has the sarcoidosis center for excellence. You know, so now I'm being taken care of there. Two months in, um, I found out I'm a 33-year-old female and I have the lung function of 50% of my peers. That is most likely not going to come back at all. Uh, most of it might not because I had a collapsed uh, lung for a year and they didn't do anything about it because it was over the doctor's heads and then the next group of doctors said so i literally lost all my lung, half my lung function in the past like 11 months really because i haven't even been i've only been on oxygen since november last year so as soon as that hit it hit my airways not it was just in my lymph nodes but then it hit my airways killed both of those lungs all my major airways and scarring and kind of more of a and my prognosis is if we can't keep it like my my lung my right lung that's collapsed open we can at least make me comfortable and stable and as i found out yesterday and i'm sorry about that um yeah it's okay like they i had no I had no idea my sarcoidosis was anywhere near that bad. And, I didn't and, have communication and people didn't know what they were doing. Yeah, we, we seem to go in and out. I'm glad you're with um, the Sarcoidosis Clinic of Excellence now in Minnesota. Me too. So, um, you know, we're here to help you in any way that we can, even if it's just to yell, scream, holler, um, ask questions, uh, please. I'm always here. I know Frank is. Uh, I know many of these people that are here. I am smiling, Jessica. by the way. <laughs> I, I'm sure, you know, if, if, if you had problems neurologically, Wendy is, is like the person to go talk to. Hi, Miss Wendy. So uh, please, we're all here and we all work together. So uh, Sorry, welcome. I was trying to find another mic. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. No problem. And, um, I'm I'm always up to try anything once because what do I got to lose, you know? Nothing. So and I just I I really need to. It's been so long now. Yeah. Because I was ashamed of my illness and I pushed all my friends away in my late twenties. So now everybody's having babies and you know like marriage and all this stuff. And I'm like, just got that news yesterday, and I just needed people. And we are here for you. And please, um, I wish we could, we're all virtually hugging you, seriously. Well, you we know. all have our stories. We do. So we can, yes. We, we do. Not just and, me. And we're here, as I said, it, because it's such a very strange disease and not, you know, we're in the rare disease community, guys. So we're rare. Mm -hmm. So we're also warriors. And you have to remember yourself as a warrior, even in your lowest points. I've been pretty low lately, so I'm glad to be back into this room. So, well, this has already picked me up, so I'm really thank you guys for letting me join in and see what this is all about. Anytime. I want to get as involved as I can in anything and everything at this point. Excellent. Just to we get look heard, that. so. Yep. Yeah, we look forward to that. So think of questions if you have any questions and I'm going to move on just so we can do the introductions. Sandy, would you be so kind to unmute yourself and and give us a hello? Hi. Yeah, I'm I can do that. And I was diagnosed. Can you hear me okay? There's, All of this, there's something yeah. in the background. Yeah, um, in and out. 30 minutes. You guys Hold on one second. I'm going to mute Hold everybody on. and then Sandy, I'm going to unmute you. You got there, Sandy. Maybe. I think Sandy is having. Oh. Okay. All right. Can you guys hear me now? Okay. Uh, right. Okay. Andy, I live in Crisco, because... Texas, which is a suburb of Dallas. You should be able to talk now, Sandy. Can you hear me? You're freezing up there a little. Yes. Andy. Yes. No.
Okay, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yes, Andy. Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Sandy. I live in I think you're, uh, you're breaking up, love. Texas. Yes. It's a suburb of Dallas. I was diagnosed with pulmonary and and um lymph node sarcoidosis uh, four years ago. Uh, oh, I think we lost you, Sandy. Um, if you don't mind, uh, we'll see if we can get your. You know what? Can you give me someone else go next? Give me a chance to see if I can fix this on my end, okay? Okay, so I'm going to move on to maybe. Me? Yep. All right, so we're going to move on. Sandy, I'll come back to you, I promise. Jessica, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Would you like to introduce yourself, please? Sure. Thank you. Hi, guys. My name is Jessica. I am um, out of Cary, North Carolina, kind of near Raleigh. Um, first diagnosed with neurosarcoidosis in 2003 as a sophomore college student. Um, it's been a tough road. Um, I've had a couple of skin um, involvement and um, maybe some small nodules in my lungs, but nothing um, caused any type of symptoms or anything of the sort. Um, and like Frank and Kathleen, I'm also um, an FSR ambassador slash um, navigator this year. And um, I welcome everyone. I'm sorry I haven't been able to be here. <laughs> like I told Kathleen in the email as much as I'd like to because I work and I'm in school full time and my children's activities. Um, but please know this is a wonderful environment where you can be completely transparent. Um, it's safe. And like Kathleen said, you can cry, you can yell, whatever you need to do. Because as, as I was unmuted, uh, as I was muted, I'm sorry. I was actually shedding a couple of tears. <laughs> Um, but thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Where are you located? North Carolina. Perfect. I think I missed that. I apologize. No, no, you're good. Thank you. Dorothy, would you like to introduce yourself? You just hit unmute. Let me see if I could help. Uh, Dorothy. Okay, well, Dorothy. Unmute. I, I unmuted Dorothy. Go ahead, Dorothy. I still can't hear you, Dorothy. Hmm. Okay. Dorothy, we're going to come back to you in a few Why? minutes, okay? Can you hear her, Kathleen? I cannot hear her. Can anybody else hear Dorothy yet? No. no. <laughs> All right, so I promise you I will come back. Chris, Crystal, are you still there? I might have a trouble back to I want something to going on with my mic. Uh, I could hear you, Crystal. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Crystal Walmar, and um, my husband has sarcoidosis, and um, um, his therapist thought that this would be um, a good resource for us. Um, so he was kind of busy tonight, but I wanted to join um, because uh, we go through this as a family. Um, he was diagnosed with sarcoidosis. Uh, May of 2019, and we thought it was a heart attack. Um, and then we get to the emergency room, and they tell us it's cancer. But within seven days, he already had had a biopsy and confirmed pulmonary sarcoidosis. Um, that is a new term for us. Um, and um, we have 
gone throughout to check all the different um, areas and still are waiting um, kidney um, prognosis because he's had kidney stones and different things. Um, but it, it is a, a different um, a reality. Um, however, we're very hopeful. Um, my husband is 42, so um, he was very quite young and no one in our family or anything in his family had ever heard of uh, sarcoidosis. And um, just with my experience um, in medicine and medical recruiting, I knew that, um, you know, most physicians have not seen sarcoidosis. Um, and even the pulmonary specialist had never seen anyone his age with it. Um, so that was like a red flag to me to try to find the best resources um, for knowledge. And I know Cleveland Clinic Hospital is a great resource or as a, a medical group. So I did some research to see what they had and got so excited because they had a clinic and everything. And then I said, wow, I wonder if we have that in Colorado. And we have um, National Jewish Hospital, which is uh, the number one pulmonary respiratory hospital in the nation. And so I immediately uh, got him in for an appointment. And um, my husband's also a veteran. And um, so the, the veteran health system is, you know, totally different. So we basically do a dual system and we're very happy with uh, National Jewish um, and our physician because um, our pulmonary doctor here in Colorado Springs where we live through the VA, um, he's seen a few cases but the physician at National Jewish sees cases all day. And so um, there's sometimes when one doctor wants to do one thing, she's like, nope, that's normal. Let's ride this out. Let's not do anything drastic. So um, I just wish that everyone could have that kind of medical help. And I know that finding that medical help early is very important because um, along the way, we've heard of several stories from other people that didn't get the right diagnosis for, um, you know, several years and, and they had, you know, um, uh, permanent consequences for that. Um, and so um, we're very grateful, uh, very blessed that the shock and awe came with a clear diagnosis re very soon. Now that has changed our life, it's changed our family, um, but we're very grateful um, for a clear prognosis. And we still have lots of challenges, but we're very hopeful. And now we see a, a, a mental health therapist because it has totally changed um, a lots of things, including my husband's behaviors and work environment. And so, um, those of you who work with this, many times you may have challenges with your employer or your coworkers because they don't understand all the things that you go through and how you feel and how the medicine makes you feel. Um, but um, we're battling through it and, uh, you know, very hopeful. So thank you for um, uh, this virtual um, platform. I'm not sure what to expect, but I was hoping to come and glean from others that um, are in the same boat. And thank you so much for joining us, Crystal, and finding us, because we do find it important and important to support one another. Thank so you. Lisa D, would you please introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from. Hi, um, well, I'm Lisa, and I live in the San Francisco area near Napa, and needless to say, it's been a challenge just to breathe out here lately. Um, we've been inundated with fires, so if I start coughing, I'm sorry, we're a little smoky yet. Um, I was diagnosed a year ago. They first told me I had cancer and they thought it was stage four lymphoma and it had metastasized to my lungs, but they did the biopsy and told me I had sarcoidosis. 
And first pulmonologist I went to, because I've been having a lot of like neuro symptoms. And first pulmonologist they sent me to told me, oh, it never goes to the brain. It's all in your head. He was right. It is. It's all in my head. <laughs> um, Sorry for laughing, but that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, in June, I was diagnosed with neurosarcoidosis. And it's my brainstem, my cerebellum, my right ventricle. Uh, thyroid, um, sarcoid arthritis, pulmonary, um, the drugs are killing me. The steroids put me in the hospital for a week with pancreatitis. Um, and now I'm starting to get this beautiful butterfly rash on my face. And it looks like the Remicade is not working so I don't know I've been off work a year and I the fatigue is enough to kill you mm. I mean right now I just found out my iron levels down to four so all I could do is all I want to do is sleep and I ended up having to have surgery on Monday or Tuesday sorry because the steroids I had in February, I had foot surgery, and the steroids messed with the hardware, so they had to take the hardware out. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah, it has not been a fun trip, and I, my mother's still alive. She lives in Chicago, and she tells everybody I'm a hypochondriac, and there's nothing wrong with me. Um. I and I'm like, <laughs> if you Family. only live the day in my shoes, you know. And uh, yeah, so she's like, oh, come home to Chicago. We'll find you good doctors. Well, I'm at UCSF, which is one of the premier sarcoidosis clinics in the country. Mm, it is. Uh, number two in neurological. And. You know, they're trying to find drugs that'll work for me. And it's just, it's been hard. Yeah. Unfortunately, sarcoidosis is, isn't it? Yeah. And it's not fun when you live in a smoky area. Yeah. And we'll yeah. hear from another person in the smoky area in a minute. But I'd <laughs> like to go to Wendy, if you don't mind, Miss Wendy, because NeuroSark kind of leads into uh, you. Are you there? I had to unmute myself. Hi, everybody. Oh. Hi, Wendy. It's been beautiful here in Rochester, New York. The weather's been really, really great, guys. <laughs> we don't have all those uh, fires that you have in California. It's been amazing. This summer, is, with this COVID, I can't believe how beautiful it's been here. But I've been getting out a lot um, and forcing myself. Um, you know, to exercise because exercises help me out a lot. And one thing I found out that um, I don't have time for the naysayers or the bullies or anything like that. I only have time to um, make friends. So Lisa, I don't know, uh, you know, you're talking about people calling you hypochondriac. I think that is just cruel. Yeah. And you don't deserve that. And if she's inviting you over her house, I would give her the middle finger and say, you know, I'm better off on my own. <laughs> oh, it's her mom. She probably never will. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Trust me. You wait. No, mom and I do not always get along. <laughs> Yeah, but but even that is your mother saying it. I think that's very abusive because it is. It is really really hard having this disease. And she's a nurse. Well, and she's a like, bad nurse. Yeah, she keeps telling me, oh, people get this disease. It goes away within six months, and they have no other problems. I'm like, <laughs> for majority of people, yes, that's true. You know, they don't. A lot of people don't even know they have it, but 
obviously mine's chronic. It's hit me everywhere. Yeah, I've been in and out of the hospital. It's been hell. Mm. Yeah. I, 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 I believe it. It, 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 it you know, um, the pulmonary, um, you know, I got it under control um, with medicine, but the neuro, I, you know, getting under control too, but it can, you know, it, it takes a miracle, I swear, because they do not have a cure for this, but yeah. you got to push yourself. People tell me, oh, I can't get out and exercise. I'll, I'll write something about exercising. And some of the circuit people say, well, I can't do it. Well, you know what? If I kept on saying I can't, where am I going to go? Yeah. Right. Well, now that I have the screws out of my foot, I can walk my dogs again. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they a great support? Like I don't know what I'd do without my dogs. Yeah, I have um four of them. Yeah. And uh, they're all ex fighters, pit bulls. And they're they're my they're they're my family. They Did are. you ever have a time where that you because you said you were on the Remakite, Did you ever have a time that you were doing okay? Well, they just diagnosed me at the end of June, so um, with the neuro, and that's when they started me on high doses of solumental and the Remicade, and the solumental is, oh my God, it's re wreaking havoc on my body. I haven't slept. I got an infusion yesterday, and I haven't slept yet. And it makes me crazy. I, I I feel like I'm coming out of my skin, and I just burn up. Like all I want to do is jump in a cold shower every ten minutes to cool down. And if I have a hot, if I'm like in the shower with hot water, I pass out. So I can't take a hot shower. Mm. Because so what, is that? what is that silamethyl? I've never heard of it. It's it's another form of prednisone. So Lisa, oh, yeah. one of the things that I would suggest to you is anytime we have any of kind of reactions that does not see that we're not handling it well, you need to get a hold of the doctors. I was not able to take solumedrol at all. Um, because I had allergic reactions to it and I was not sleeping and I just I was going from crying to happy and stuff like that and I'm sorry for stepping on you Wendy so but because it came no, up no. Um, so you definitely want to speak to them about it because there are other forms that can be given Lisa so yeah. just think about that but I see them tomorrow I go for another lumbar puncture and another MRI of my brain and my spine and then when I'll see you had, a, you had a lumbar puncture in June and they're doing it again. They're doing another one, yeah. Wow. They want to see if the medication's working. They should so. be able to, Frank, should they not be able to I, see that with the ACE levels and the... My uh, ACE levels yeah. never go up. I, They've never been elevated. What about the CRP, the C-reactive protein? Nope. Sorry, it's always normal. That's what kept throwing them for the I loop. Just, I just, I just read I an article. I was told that I can And I was told in the article it says that the ACE has now been determined not to be a good um, barometer for sarcoidosis anymore. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I read that too. I just read, it, just read that, yes, two days ago. I have to find the article. Thanks, Frank. They said that for some time. But Lisa, why are they not taking X-rays, Rodney? Ugh. Rodney, what what what'd you say? I say they they've been saying that for about the ACE levels not being a measurement. Really? So what? Talk about, your segmentation rate and your CPR they should be going up if your sunk card is active. They're not. My sedimentation so rate's normal. Rodney, what goes up? I could not hear you. You're going in and out. Said the uh, segmentation rate and the conference will now be recorded. You did record it. You did record it. You did record it. You did record it. Oh. Sorry, I think All that right. was Frank. That was me. Oh. <laughs> did you hear me, Wendy? No, I can't. It was like some weird noise. Oh, that was something. Yeah, it was 
hesitation rate and there's curiosity numbers, those numbers uh I would think would be going up if, if she joined after uh, Thank you. And my sedimentation rate and my uh, my sedimentation rate and my C reactive protein and my ACE all always show normal. Interesting. Yeah. All right, we'll come back to that because we'll we'll find other things for you. What what else they should be looking at? Don't worry. We we have a whole bunch of minds here, and everybody's mind is is good. Wendy, have you completed? Introducing yourself? Oh, yeah. So I'm Wendy, and I'm from Rochester, New York. Um, I didn't think I told you I was from Rochester. I kept on saying it was nice here. <laughs> um, but I have neurosarcoid. I have thyroid sarcoid. And I have um, pulmonary sarcoid. And I'm having some other issues right now. I All I have to say is, um, sorry, my dog's snoring. Um, <laughs> that I was told hardly anybody has neurosarcoid, Lisa. So yeah. you told that? Yes, very 10 to 15% or something um, of sarcoid yeah. patients. And I'm just waiting for somebody to call Kathy or Frank in my area <laughs> because I can't wait to meet someone. <laughs> I know this sounds mean. I, t I told you, Wendy, in the spring, I'm probably coming up to visit you after you get rid of all the snow. You know what, Kathy? It's so funny. What are you, uh, us, us, uh, uh, clairvoyant? Because I was going to say, Kathy, if you ever come up here, you can always stay here. Yep. I, I, I definitely need to reach out to you. So we'll go, we'll go to Niagara Falls. Sounds like a great idea. So I'm going to move on if that's okay with you, Wendy. Are you all good? No Okay, so James, um, and hi Spencer, how are you? We're still in uh, getting to know you, so I still have to go back to Sandy, but James, could you introduce yourself, please? James? He might be on mute. No, no he's, he's not. not on mute. Oh, okay. He's not in the room. Hmm. All right, we'll come back. Mr. Rodney. Hi, is it working now? Sorry. Oh, there he is. There James, we welcome. Aha. You know, you know, these Windows computers have a mind of their own with regard to sound. Sorry. Um, hi, uh, my, my name's James, but I'm actually go by Jim. And uh, I always, I've been in this uh, forum for about a year and I usually tell everybody I'm from San Francisco, but uh, Lisa will know where I am because I'm in Novato, which is just across the valley from Napa and, and Sonoma in that area. Oh yeah, I know Novato too well. <laughs> uh, so I'm a smoke sufferer as well. And uh, for me, it's a real problem because the two things I like to do are outdoors. One is uh, ride a bike and the other one is swim. And um, so I was diagnosed with uh, cardio sarcoidosis about a year ago and I'm coming up on my one year uh, I guess anniversary if it will of my uh, implant and the day I started um, prednisone good old 60 milligrams of prednisone and I'm happy to say I'm down to 10 milligrams uh, per day now and last July I already announced on a, a previous meeting that I had a, a PET scan done and uh, my sarcoidosis has disappeared from my heart walls. So it's a very good thing. Um, and what I, I learned a lot of valuable lessons from this group that, well, so far so good, but don't, you know, don't let your, don't let your guard down because it could come back. So um, that's my message is that, you know, just because it seems like you're out of the woods, you may not be out of the forest. So I, I like this group. I like the support. Um, I'm always interested in, in how widely the um, the symptoms are in people, and you know, it it just makes me very thankful for the good care that I have here and my doctors. And um, hopefully, uh, we can support each other that way with whatever situation you're in. And uh, Kathleen's been very good to me, and I appreciate all of her 
personal support as well. And Frank, thanks. Hey, James, um, I have a question for you because you've been on before. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Um, is there any way that you could um, get a hold of like um, one? I I know this is really personal, but like because you've done so good, I think that they need to know about why you've gotten so good. Who's they? Like there's some kind of research going on, right, Frank? Um, through um, FSR? Through FSR, there was something they were talking about. Yeah, um, um, it's not through FSR. It's they were in the um, the I don't know Minnesota. Um, do you know anything about that, Frank? They're doing research on um, how people are doing with sarcoid. Frank, wake up. No, actually, he's frozen there. He's he's on a phone as well, okay. so he's not napping. <laughs> Even though he looks you know like there, Kathleen. Um, I don't. You know me. what? I, I have get a... so many calls, and they called me. Um, you know, with doctors. That I, my whole day is always with doctors. You know, yes. you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I see Frank frozen there. Oh, that's my dog. Uh, so. All right. Can you can you hear me? Yes, Frank. Yeah. Okay. Well, we did hear you for a minute. Uh, the, the best thing, can you still hear me now? Yeah. Yes. yes. Hello? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Wendy, I will look into that. And uh, I'm already connected with Jim on uh, email. So I will uh, hand it over because I also know my girlfriend works at the sarcoidosis clinic in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So, okay, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and so I'm, happy to, I'm very happy to contribute whenever uh, I can. So Jim, I'll find out that information for Wendy, right. and Wendy, I'll also attach. Jim, you did to he it go out. on the? Did though, Kathy? Did he go on the FSR because it has all this um, different, you know? topics about going you know into the research stuff i i didn't really get into it that much but he was talking about it and i you know any little thing to help us you know yeah and he he's uh, jim is is um a fantastic gentleman he he only wants what's good for the whole community including himself of course just like all the rest of us so i will definitely look into that wendy thank you so much for that information jim i will get that information to you all right. good. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you. Thank and you. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. And Rodney, would you like to say hello? Hello. All right. Now you have to introduce hello. yourself. Oh, okay. Oh, that's what you want, Kathleen. Okay. Good to see you, Kathleen. <laughs> that's Hi, it. I'm going to visit you. <laughs> My name is Rodney. I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So I'm not from the fire capital of the world. I'm from the hurricane capital of the world. I uh, was diagnosed with sarcoid back in 2000. Um, very active uh, since that time because at the time I was diagnosed, there was really no one that knew a lot about the illness. Uh, I did all my learning over the internet and uh, with you know, finding other people to talk to. And uh, I have a pulmonary sarcoid, I have sarcoid hemorrhages. I was diagnosed with sarcoidosis in my testicles. And I just, I'm, I'm recovering right now from cervical spine surgery. I have four discs in my cervical spine replaced. That was two weeks ago, Tuesday. Uh, I've been doing some, some research on uh, cervical spine and, and the and sarcoidosis, and I found some articles that, that says that, you know, in people that have problems with their cervical spine that have sarcoidosis, or in their spinal system itself, that 90% uh, of them have problems in the, in the cervical area. But the doctors are so quick to brush it off and just tell you, well, no, this can't, this can't be so hard. 
So I requested that my doctor take samples of those discs out and send them off for biopsy, which I'm not sure if he did it or not. Uh, I only saw him once after the surgery and I was still on his medication. But I will see him on the 21st and find out if he did. If he doesn't, if he didn't, I might be calling on you all to raise funds to get me out of jail. But uh, you, you have to, you, you know, you have to bring these kind of things to your doctors and, and because they will brush it off. They will tell you in a minute what sarcoidosis won't do. Can't tell you what it will do. So, uh, Kathleen, uh, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thank you, Rodney. And I totally agree with you. And that kind of goes for everybody. If something weird is going on, don't just assume that it's not sarcoidosis. Don't also assume it's sarcoidosis. But I think we all need to push our doctors into, if they're doing a biopsy anyway, I'll just give a quick synopsis. I had a breast needle biopsy a couple of years ago, and I asked them to please check for sarcoidosis. Um, as they did the needle biopsy. And I brought papers that said from Europe that they have found it in breast tissue, in cervical tissue, et cetera. And they, they did not, they only biopsied for the cancer. So I was ticked and I have stopped using them here on Long Island. I only want people who will biopsy. If you're gonna biopsy for one thing, how much difficult is it to biopsy for a second thing? So, but anyway, Dorothy, could you say hello now? Yes, I can. I got the app downloaded. Um, I'm Dorothy. I'm from Hampton Bays, Long Island. This is my first time in the group. Um, I've had a diagnosis of sarcoidosis for years now, um, and I had been magically thinking I was cured, um, ignored a lot of symptoms, and I'm now in a flare of my, car, uh, my pulmonary sarc. Um, I just got put on prednisone and methotrexate. Um, I have cutaneous sarcoid. That's how I was, um, that's how my lung nodules or my lung granulomas finally got diagnosed officially in about 2008. But I've had the skin painful scalp, cutaneous sarcoid for as long as I can remember and I've seen, I had seen a hundred dermatologists who told me, stop complaining, it's, it's psoriasis. So the journey is really long. I work in medical social work, I'm a palliative care, a community social worker on Long Island. And this disease just completely throws me. Um, it, it, it's just, um, it's kind of insidious and I'm really angry that I ignored the symptoms that I was having. Um, I have a cardiologist appointment next week. I've been having like shortness of breath. Um, at night, I wake up sort of hyperventilating and I've ha been having the symptom for over a year and it's, you know, it's on and off. So it's kind of interesting to be in this group, but I facilitate some groups during the day. It's my third group of the day. Um, but it's awesome, thank you. Um, thank you for being here. And I can't believe you're so close and I have never been able to meet you or, so I'm glad to have that opportunity now. Um, Frank, as you well know, is on Long Island as well. Um, please reach out to us. I'm going to, if you're in the chat, I'm gonna send you a personal message with mine and Frank's phone numbers. Great. So Thanks. if you have any questions about doctors or anything like that, you're more than welcome to use it. I definitely do. Dorothy, Dorothy you did email me, right, recently? I did email you, yeah, yes. Um, I'm a little bit behind on my emails. That's why I, once I saw your, your name, I was like, oh yes, I did read it. I was gonna answer, but I've been also dealing with some stuff, so. But I will I will send you the, that info that you asked for. Right, yeah, I've been thinking about a functional medicine doctor um, and just, just Good advice. Um, even though I work with a pulmonologist, I actually have an office in his office who's 
treating me. I just, I don't have a comfort level with his knowledge. I don't have a comfort no level with the knowledge of any physician I've ever met. Yeah, yeah well, if you need a pulmonologist, <laughs> there's, a, real, there's a, a good one in Smithtown, Dr. Spadaro. Um, he does, he, um, I go to him. Um, and he's actually picked out by um, by Dr. Morgenthau, who is a sarcoidosis specialist in New York City. He's the one who told me to go see him, and he's very good. So if you're, he's in Smithtown off of Route 111. Is he accepting new patients now, Frank? Because he wasn't yes. when I went yes. for him. Okay. Yes. Well, you, if you don't get him, his partner, Dr. Margolis, is also a sarcoidosis specialist too. Okay. So both of them are. They both of them. I with those doctors, and I have to tell you a story. I'm sorry, it's terrible, okay. but Dr. Margolis did my first bronchoscopy and gave me a diagnosis of pneumoconiosis, which is black lung disease. So I was totally clueless that this was my this was my diagnosis. When was that? This was in 2006. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. I know, I know I, I've only been working with them since 2013. And I, I really see Spadaro more. He's mm -hmm. really my main doctor. Uh, but um, when I've talked to Margolis, um, he knows more about it now. And Spadaro said, I'm teaching him. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm going to teach him. He's because he, I sent, I've sent a, probably about 10 new patients to him now, to Spadaro. And he's like, uh, I want Margolis to start taking some patients. So he's teaching them. My okay. other question is that my diagnosis, um, I have granulomas in my ab abdomen. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if that's something yeah. you need to check out with a GI doc. Um, yes, a GI doctor. Yes. A GI doctor would know um, if you need one for um, a GI, there's um, Dr. Dresnik, he's in Port Jefferson. Mm -hmm. He's my GI doctor. He's okay. he's been with me through all eight of my GI surgeries. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, so it is something that you recommend I check out. Yeah, yes, yeah, we do, definitely. Okay, thank you. You're mm -hmm. welcome. Thank you for joining us, Dorothy. Should I introduce myself finally? Huh. Kathleen, you went on mute. You're on mute, Kathleen. Thank you, because I thought Spencer was going to go. So if you'd like to yeah. go first, if you'd like to just go first, Frank. Go ahead, Spencer. No, go ahead, Spencer. Okay, so for those of you who don't know me, I am Spencer. I'm out here a little bit south of Seattle. Um, I'm officially, according to National Institute of Health, the youngest sarcoidosis patient ever diagnosed. I was diagnosed at four years old with systemic uh, sarcoid. So 25 now, been battling it my whole life. For the longest time, I thought this was just sort of normal for, you know, everybody. So uh, I go through it very differently than everybody else, because to me, this is very normal. Um, I, I'm pretty active on Facebook. If you've seen the Sarcoid, uh, National Sarcoid Support Group, um, I'm a firm believer of be your own advocate, but also, you know, you know your body better than anybody else. So if something isn't right, tell your doctor. I, I give it the two-day rule. If something's not right after two days, okay, my doctor's going to hear from me. And for those of you out on the West Coast, oh, and anywhere really, feel free to reach out to me. I always am one to say, hey, this is how I would deal with it. Um, I've been dealing, like I said, my whole life. So this is pretty normal for me. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Thank you, Spencer. Not and thanks problem. for being here all the time. It's, it's nice to see you here. It's therapeutic for me, Kathleen. I'm glad. <laughs> I think it's therapeutic for us all. So Frank, if you don't mind, we didn't get to hear from Sandy before, and I don't okay. want to forget. I know that there's still a Liz, but can we go to Sandy first, Frank? Sure. Thank you, Sandy. Hi. Uh oh. No. You sound like a chipmunk. <laughs> I 
Frank's laughing because you really do sound like a chipmunk. I can't wait till you hear this back, Sandy. It's hysterical. <laughs> I even Lisa D is laughing hysterically over there. She's gonna have you. Yeah, fast, fast forward or something. Can you try calling in? Kathleen, yeah, you want to try to call in. Kathleen, that's happened to me before. This is Jim. Um, Hi, Jim. The, the way to do it is to go up to the little gear up at the top and switch your uh, audio device and then switch it back and it'll clean it up. It's uh, it's a Windows thing. You want to try that, Sandy? It's the at little the wheel yeah. on the top. It has people that says 12 and then a little chat bar and then a wheel. And you, um, you'll see your microphone in there and you can choose another one and then choose the one that you're trying to use and it should all start working again. Okay, while she figures it out, can we please hear from Frank? I'm, we haven't heard from him. Yes, Miss Wendy. Frank, you wanna say hi while Sandy's working on her wheels? Sure, I'm actually just putting in the chat room if she needs to make a if call in, there's the call in number. Okay. Perfect. Uh, all right. So my name is Frank Rivera. I'm from Long Island, New York. Uh, I've been diagnosed, well, misdiagnosed in 2004 and diagnosed in 2011. Um, for the new people, really quick, my misdiagnosis, like everybody else that gets misdiagnosed, um, I got that misdiagnosed with lung cancer, but mine was a little bit more extreme because they actually did four years of chemo and radiation uh, for the for the lung cancer that I never had. So I see Lisa's face is like, what? Lisa's D is <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah, so I went through four years of chemo and radiation. Um, it was a lot of fun, not. And by the time I got diagnosed in 2011, I already had it in 75% of my body. So now I actually have it in, I would say 100% of all my main organs. Um, and I, I guess, I don't, I don't know where I don't have it, put it that way. I used to say I don't have it in my liver and kidneys, but as of last, uh, about two weeks ago, I was told I actually do have it in my liver and kidneys now. So I have it pretty much everywhere. Um, but I deal with it. Um, and I started this, um, this with Kathleen Rodney and a couple of others, that, um, moderators that aren't here today. Uh, but. We have about eight moderators and um, we started this because a lot of people are, li are living in places that don't have a support group and we actually started this before um, COVID actually hit, which was a good thing. Um, and so we were up and running and going when COVID started. So we, you know, we were able to hit, pe um, to talk to people, which was a really good thing. Um, and we, you know, that's what. I started this because I wanted everybody to know that you you are not alone. Everything you you know, everything that you say here, somebody's probably gone through it. Uh, even though we're all called um, snowflakes and we've gone through different things, um, we could we all give advice. Um, but here's the thing with the advice: none of us are medical professionals, uh, but we are sarcoidosis professionals because <laughs> we've been dealing with it. Um, but you know, take. When I like, if I give advice, I always tell everybody to uh, take it with a grain of salt because what happens to me that may not happen with you, um, and that, especially with medicines. Uh, so I always say, I always say to people, you know, don't be afraid to question your doctors. Also, you're your own best advocate, and you always will be. Um, don't let them tell you what the book says about sarcoidosis because there really is no book on sarcoidosis. So don't believe that. <laughs> um, and if you have a doctor who does treat you like that, you need to go looking for another one. And if you ever do need another doctor anywhere, you can contact us. Um, I have a long list of doctors, um, even more than FSR has, has now. I don't know how, I, how that happened. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so you know, we're here, we're all here um, to help each other and, you know, try to, we try to keep it as positive as possible. And thank you all for coming. And I love to see new faces because it means that we're getting out there. And the more new faces, the, the, the better it is. So we can really, you know, especially all the new people, um, 
you know, we're here to help you guys because we've been through a lot. Um, so thanks again. Go ahead, Kathleen. All yours. Thank you, Frank. I really want to hear from Sandy. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Yay. I'm, I'm just going to have to call in on the telephone every time. That's the only thing that works. So, um, but I think thank- we like the chipmunks too. So <laughs> I, I got to hear it. I got to play it back. Anyway, my name is Sandy. I live in Frisco, Texas, which is a, a suburb of Dallas. And I was diagnosed with pulmonary and lymph node sarcoidosis in 2016, but I have had it for a lot longer. Um, it, it seems to run in the family. My father has it, and now I have it. And what's interesting is that his, his disease has followed a certain progression, and I'm following in his path. And that's really scary to me because his path leads to uh, cardiac sarcoidosis. I know you, you guys, some of you guys are already living with that, but it's just I live in fear of the, of the time when I'm going to end up with cardiac sarcoidosis because everything that happens to me is happens to my dad has happened to me and in the same sequence. So. Anyway, my, my pulmonary sarc is under control right now. Um, what I've been struggling with the last year or so is I, I've lost the, some sensation in my feet from what they call sarcoidosis-associated neuropathy. I don't have neurosarc, but I have sarcoidosis-associated neuropathy. And I have sarcoidosis-associated arthritis. And so those two things have been making my life less enjoyable than it should be, although I'm I'm much healthier than, I mean, I, from all of you, I'm doing so much better. I'm able, I would need to be grateful for the fact that I can work full time. Um, I have family support because my, runs in my family, so they understand. I don't have people telling me that I'm making this all up. And so that's really helpful. My family understands I have a real supportive boss. I work for the Food and Drug Administration and my, my, all my coworkers are, you know, healthcare professionals. So, um, they're really help. They understand, and they're very supportive. My boss is just wonderful. He's a physician, and he's my medical consultant. So, like when I don't understand the lab results, he'll go over them with me and explain it to me. And I work for the. If you guys ever want a job, work for the government because the way the government works is you get two weeks of sick leave every year, and if you don't use it, it just piles up. And I had 55 years of good health, so I have like 1,400 hours of sick leave that I can be out of the office and still get paid. So I'm getting paid even when I'm out. I mean, so I am so blessed. And I know this is a terrible thing to say, but I like coming to these meetings because you guys make me feel better about my situation. When I'm around healthy people, I get really depressed about for all the things I can't do. And when I come around you guys, I think I realize how fortunate I am to be so healthy for someone who has sarcoidosis. And I have no guarantee this will last forever. So I need to appreciate it while I have it. So that's all I have to say. That's plenty. Sandy, it was great to finally hear from you, and thank you so much for sharing. Liz, are you still there? Liz? I think she dropped out. Okay. How would she still be up if she dropped out? Uh, sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. It yeah, doesn't sometimes depend. it freezes. Mm-hmm. So... Who's see, caller three? I, I, don't see, I don't see her caller here either. Caller three. Frank, are you caller three? No. Hmm. But you were calling on caller three last time and they did not say anything. Yeah. Has everybody really Has everybody introduced themselves? Let's start there. If somebody has not introduced yourselves, could you speak up? And where's Kevin? Kevin mm-hmm. disappeared. Right? Yeah, he had a phone call, so maybe he had to go for that. Maybe. Okay. Was he caller number three? I I don't know. I didn't see no. his name. Yeah, no, he Kevin was. was yeah, Kevin video. was had his name on it. So, what would you all like to speak about today? I have a question. Um, I saw one. I saw a special um on um genetics, and how mm-hmm. they're um curing um. They said a cure, which is amazing for sickle cell, but it's, you know, um, when they, they, it's not like a really easy thing what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And one person has died out of the study and the rest yeah, are doing really like well. But, what, Frank? But, but Frank, yeah. what, yep, what yes. about us? Well, you got to 
he, I went over this um, a couple of times with a couple of people, but also with um, we, yesterday. No, wait. Yeah, yesterday, we go health had a um, clinic thing about clinical trials and the uh, pharma and patient, like the distance. Yeah, here's the deal. And this is, I mean, the easiest way to put it is that we have only only 200,000. It may sound like we have a lot, but compared to a lot of these diseases like sickle cell, like cancers, like every, um, Parkinson's, uh, all those big um, organizations, they, they have millions and millions of people. Uh, so there's two parts of this that w is a problem. Um, one part I really bothered me that I was in a um, focus group and with a whole bunch of um, sarcoidosis patients. And this, it was a farmer. They didn't tell us who they were, but they were working on a drug that would um, would um, take away prednisone from your body. You know, they you wouldn't have to use prednisone, and it's not it's it's not Actar gel or any. It's this one is in in its first clinical trial, um, and it has very little side effects. All right, so we had 20 people in this focus group, and 16 of them were sarcoidosis patients. When they asked the, the 16 patients if they would, or they would have to stop their prednisone for for um, four months, not one patient said they would do it. So how are you going to do a clinical trial when not one patient is going to sign up for it? You got to be able, you have we have to be able to take risks. I know it's going to hurt us, you know, being off prednisone or being off whatever we have to do. But if we don't, us as sarcoidosis patients, if we don't take that chance, we'll never have a cure. End of story. That's it's just that easy. And then the second part is farmers never going to, when, now this is a bit, I, I could tell it was a big pharma company. Now that, now when they go back to do this study and they hear that's, out of the 16 people, only two people said, yeah, we would do it. Um, you think they're going to go on to the second part of their clinical trial? No. Even, no. Though, you know, it's, even though it's better than prednisone? And prednisone is, I mean, we all know prednisone itself can kill us. Mm -hmm. why, wouldn't, why wouldn't we want to do it then? I know you might, you might be hurting for a couple of months, but you never know. This, this drug may help you. Why not give I it a try? Anything other than the solumedrol, it's horrible. <laughs> so, so he, that's that's a big problem that we have in our in our company. When you, when you have a focus group of twenty people and or 16, 16 sarcoidosis patients, and only two say yes, think they're gonna. You know how many millions it costs to get from clinical trial number from the first phase to the second phase? Oh, Seven my. million dollars. Seven million dollars. Are they going to spend $7 million on two patients? Nope. <laughs> Frank, Frank, no Frank, I got a problem though, okay? Because mm -hmm. I've signed up, tried to get into a couple of the clinical trials. My doctors told me not to do it, but I still went and did it. One, they told me I live too far. They don't have anybody in the area to do it. Okay, that is a big one. And two, they won't take me because I have neurosarcoid. They were, uh, I mean, clinical trials, the, the problem with clinical trials and that's, you know, is that they always are going to look for that perfect patient first. Um, like if it's a pulmonary SOC um, clinical trial, they're going to look for a patient that only has pulmonary SOC. Uh, not because the side effects of having neurosoc and taking this medicine may affect your neurosoc even worse and make it worse. And they won't get their results. And they won't get the proper results either. So that's why you have to understand when they, they do a clinical trial, they want the perfect person because it, it can't get to the next level unless they pass each level. Like if they have, you see, you seen um, with the what do they call it? with COVID, see all these um, tests that they're doing now, the clinical trials. One person got sick in each of these trials. They had to shut it down. They had to shut the whole trial down. And they've, this is four now, four, even more, maybe, maybe five, four or five, or, um, Johnson & Johnson. Uh, I forgot all of the names, but there was five of them, five pharmaceutical companies that had to shut their, and they're in the final stage of their clinical trials.
they had to stop them. They didn't shut them down altogether, but they had to stop it until they figured out why this person, these per people were getting sick. But that was only one person. So if, God forbid, you sign up for it and then you get sick, they have to close, they have to stop everything. And that costs more money for them. So it's real. It's really hard. And people, oh, there's one other thing. Clinical trials take seven years. Seven years for a clinical trial. A, that's a normal clinical trial. They're rushing the COVID one, and hence why they're getting all these people out of sick. But um, that's my own personal opinion. <laughs> but the other thing is that, yeah, yeah, really, I mean, it, we don't have a, we don't even have a cause. If it's hard to have a clinical trial when you don't have a cause, it's it's so hard. It's how you're going to get an animal model, and when you can't, if you don't know what causes it. You can't get an animal model. So it's very, very hard. We're in a very bad, bad situation with with our disease. We're kind of stuck. Um, and that, hence why you see there's still 200 um, clinical trials because they really are trying. It's not like there aren't pharmaceutical companies that aren't trying, but they are trying. But they, um, I talked, who was it? I forgot. Oh, Pfizer. I talked to Pfizer. And they were saying that they get a certain amount of money. For, uh, the organization, the company gives a certain amount of money for rare diseases, period. And that's their, it's all rare diseases. Well, there's 7,000 rare diseases. They don't say they get 2 million, you know? You can only maybe do one. <laughs> Pick one. <laughs> and right now, cystic fibrosis happens to be the top of the list of rare diseases, of amount of people. So if you notice, they just found three new medicines for cystic fibrosis. So, I mean, it's just un unfortunate where we are in in our development. We just, I mean, we need somebody to find the, the cause. That's the, the big, that's the easiest thing to say. I mean, every doctor I've talked to, Colba, um, Bra uh, Brockman or whatever, um, the guy from Albany. Um, Bob yeah, Bob and Judson. Yeah, and Judson, both of them, all three of them said, you know what, as soon as we find the cause, we will be able, the cure will come. But the, the problem is, is finding that cause. But you Frank, know, the uh, one, the, 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 the hospital in Minnesota that I was talking about was doing that with Judson here in Albany. They just wrote yeah. me. Yeah, he, they're working on one right now. Yeah. Um, I can't even get in to see him. Yeah, that's because if you look, Judson does a lot more studies now than he's actually seeing patients. More um, research. But the patients that he does have, he has a lot of patients. He, oh, I'm, you know, that, that's, that stinks. That's another thing yeah. that stinks. Yeah. I mean, but, we we have some really good doctors, but you also, you know, when you, I mean, you have the, doc, the same great doctors are also doing the research. <laughs> so we're limited, <laughs> unfortunately. Frank. Frank, yep. if you don't mind me chiming yes. in here, part of, part of the other reason I've discovered is with SARC, because there's so many variations of SARC, there's not one, hey, it's not like cystic fibrosis where you can say, yeah. here it is, put it in this box. Mm -hmm. And Frank can attest, Kathleen, and probably everybody here can attest, SARC doesn't uh, behave the same in, you know, person to person. So you're getting one trial that's here, one trial that's way over there. You know, they they're not talking, mm -hmm. and again, there's no cause. Mm -hmm. There's no causation for what causes sarcoid, and there's times where it's not even. You know, you can trace it back in your family, and you won't see it. You'll have to go mm -hmm. back generations and generations to find it. So, it's one of those you have to sort of piece it together. Yeah, and the best one I've seen is actually in Austria. Is they they've gotten the furthest. Um, they actually had, a, they have an, an animal model there. I don't know how, well, I don't still to this day, I don't know how they did it, but they do have an animal model. Um, but I haven't heard any really big updates from them, probably about a year, year and a half. And I'm sure COVID, you know, you got to remember with COVID, everybody when all the um, pharmaceuticals went on to COVID and kind of left the other ones, you know, to themselves. So we're going to be behind because of that too. Not you know. So um, like I said, 
I don't blame pharmaceuticals. I don't blame doctors. And I don't blame patients. But yet I blame everyone. How's that? <laughs> I get, it's not one person to blame. Right. Okay. Now, to piggyback on what you said earlier, we as patients have to get involved. Because if we don't, like Frank said, no, no company is going to spend money to, to even look to start a, a, a research protocol if they know in past protocols, patients that have this illness wasn't receptive to, to being a part of it. It was part of a, a research protocol back in 2000 at NIH. And they stopped it because they couldn't get enough people, you know, to become a part of. It. So that's one of the big, uh, the, the, what what I see is one of the biggest problems that we have. It's not that pharmaceutical companies are not doing the research. They've been doing research, I know, since 2000. At least minimum. It's not know. getting the, the people to get involved in, you know, the patients to get involved with, with doing the research. But they well, I know it. Uh... I also know since at least 98, because that's when I was diagnosed, right. you know, so prior to 2000. Right. So I know it's there because my diagnosis was originally Sjogren's and they looked at my mom's like, no, this isn't Sjogren's. And National Institute of Health uh, came in and said, no, this is sarcoid. This is the youngest case we've ever seen. So I basically for two and a half years became their guinea pig. So. What is this National of Health? I never heard of it. So, what is National, it? Is something? so National Institute of Health is the big sort of overarching medical all, for nationwide. It's in Washington, D.C. A lot of the times you'll see them do research. That's where um, president. Yeah, government Center research does. organization. Yeah, so, how did they, so how did they get involved with you? So my my father was Air Force. We were stationed in Germany. Oh, really? It, the same as my, um, is my Paul. Yeah. What, 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 Paul? Yeah. What base were you in, in German, in, in Germany? What Air Force, where were you? Where, probably Ramstein. Oh, were you in Italy? Italy and, uh. What year was, what, what year was he in? Uh, he was in prior to 95, so. I couldn't tell you the exact year, but he got out early 2000s. Actually, he got out 99 for Y2K. So the Air Force diagnosed you with with sarcoid? No, it wasn't even the Air Force. So the way the way my case ended up happening was at starting at six months old, my parents started seeing my feet swell up like golf clubs, and I mean golf like driver size feet. And they went at they went after the babysitter saying, how dare you leave him in, you know, his rocker all day. That became, okay, no, this is not just leaving him in his rocker all day. They took me to VA. VA, when I was two years old, said, told my parents, look, we don't have the, you know, capability to do anything for him here. We're sending you back to the States. And they didn't send my dad because he was doing communications at Ramstein Air Force Base. Um, and so it was me and my mother, uh, we ended up going to DC for six months. We couldn't see a doctor. So of course my mom being the way she is, uh, my mom, uh, one day she'll probably walk in here and she's probably the most like in your face. You were like at 12 months old at this time. You said six months and now there's six Yeah. You're yep, year another old? six. So I'm probably about You're a year Washington. old at this point. Yep, in DC, hadn't been seen by a doctor. My mom calls um, the uh, her state representative because she's from California and said, "Look, we're not being seen. My husband's in Germany, and uh, my dad apparently got a call saying, "Hey, you need to control your wife." And he just laughed. He's like, "I can't control her." So, so I can understand that. But so, how did they come down to diagnose you? So well, yeah. it was a lot of tests, running CAT scans, blood tests, um, biopsies, liver, spleen, arms, legs, heart, lungs, everywhere in between. And it took another 
almost three years to get a diagnosis. I was diagnosed at four and a half, so. So who diagnosed you? It was, uh, I couldn't tell you the doctor's name off the you top can't of my tell head. Me. But yeah, yeah. I, well, I don't even know. I was so young. Um, and and they was, said that you at four and a half got the got sarcoid. Got sarcoid. Yep. Yeah. And when did, how did the, they did they tell you yourself or your mom or? They told my mom, and then it was seeing doctors, and you know, I I remember at five being up on a on a stage with a bunch of doctors saying, hey, you know, sort of explaining my side of how sarcoid worked as a five-year-old. So that was, that was always kind of fun. On a stage in front of who? In front of researchers, doctors, uh, nurses, patients, everywhere in between. So See, NIH, NIH gets funded by the government. They're the ones that fund all the research for everybody throughout the United States. They're the government. They're the ones that pick all the research that is um, going to be going into trials and can they get the final say. Um, yeah. When when we um, when you talking about like uh, say so like you can do a trial yourself, Frank. Then right, you're saying what's that? You couldn't do a trial. You would have to go through the NIH. Yeah, the um, yeah, whoever wants to, to start a research, once you once you get to the trial phase, you have to go through NIH to get approved and FDA, um, which the two companies they work t together anyway pretty much but i don't understand why they made a big deal about a four-year-old getting it at the at a young age that's all i'm are, trying to figure so, out because nobody does it that hasn't happened before yeah most of the time sarcoid <laughs> what, effect. i mean i understand but it's like there's so many of us that have it like why did they i don't it doesn't so why did they put so much emphasis on that so part of the person? reason part of the reason is a, sar at that time, sarcoid had never been seen in somebody so young because sarcoid normally affects people in their mid-30s to early 40s. So it's very rare to see somebody younger than that with that disease. And somebody at my age with it was sort of a shock to the system for NIH. And, and it's also a training. It's training for the doctors to actually look for this beforehand. Right, and some of the things for them to look for, yeah. you yep. know, at, so, at yeah. that young age. And just so everybody I knows. I understand that because it's just like um, here in Rochester, you know, I have a doctor telling me that, you know, the, the sarcoid is too complicated and other doctors want to get into it. And then at the hospitals, they want to learn from me. I'm a guinea pig. You know, they have the whole hospital, you know, watching me and you know, they have classes on me and everything. And I, it, it, it's amazing to me that they would spend so much time on, on I, we've got a lot of issues and I, it just seems ironic to me. It seems like Wendy, a waste of time. I know, it's but Wendy, opinion. we're also looking back, uh, Spencer, you're 25 now, am I correct? Correct, yeah. Yeah, yes. so. So it's been 24 years since uh, he was, uh, you know, and we call it a dog and pony show for all intents purposes. Uh, and Spencer, I don't mean any disrespect no, it, it, in any so, aspect. I understand. No, it's and, all okay. And Wendy, maybe, um, you know, in a way, you're also, again, no disrespect, uh, another dog and pony show because you're helping to teach people there. So Spencer was also the one you know, even though he was four and five years old, had no idea what was going on other than he didn't know how to tie his shoes. Maybe he did in then, but, um, <laughs> you know, uh, he was for all intents purposes, a, uh, a platform for other people to learn on. So the way Frank and I and, and Rodney and most of you are going to learn is that we are not only the students trying to learn our own bodies and our new normals and a new normal could be within the next hour one of us has um, a very very bad flare within the next hour god forbid okay i don't wish that upon anybody but we're not only learning but we're also teaching because if you think now some of you have absolutely fantastic doctors and I'm so happy for you. And I, I tell Frank that all the time. I'm, I'm like, I'm so glad that you have such fantastic doctors. My doctors are eh, 
even though I live in the same area as Frank, I've tried to get in to see some of his doctors and he'll tell you they're not accepting new patients. Um, that's usually the first thing. Um, so we need to teach the other doctors that we have to see because, and Lisa, that's why I was trying to tell you, you definitely need to use your voice. I have never used my voice as I have for 2020. And Frank can tell you, I think I've gotten a little bit stronger as far as my sarcoidosis and actually standing up and putting my foot down and calling the doctors. I'm sorry, I'm a pain in their butts. And I'm t I call myself a PIA because I will use... I, I do. I mean, I literally send text messages almost daily. And do that. And, and you need to tell them that this is not exactly what Spencer said. In two days, if that medication's not working for you or your body still feels really, really bad, then you need to speak up and keep speaking up until they listen to you. That's another thing that Rodney had also taught me and so many others here um, that came before me. You know, when I first met Rodney, I had no idea how to take the man, you know, and Frank's like, listen, he's funny. Just listen to him. He'll make sense. And he so does. And he he's one of the ones that says, you know, you have to have patience with them because they don't understand what you're going through. And you know what? Would we wish this upon any even our worst enemies, guys? I would. No you know, I wouldn't wish this upon anybody. So we have to teach them. And Wendy, I really, really believe that us teaching them and for them to actually say, hey, Wendy, I'm teaching a class about you. You should say, good. And did anybody else come up with something else? Did somebody else have something else? But I did want to write, I did put in the chat, everybody, the National Institute of Health, as well as clinical trials. I've tried also, Wendy and others, to be part of clinical trials. I would never say no. I would actually come off of a medication in order to do another, to do a clinical trial, but uh, I have not been accepted as of yet. But I did put the clinical trials, it's trials, I don't know what I spelled the first time, .gov. And if you put in sarcoidosis or you put in neurosarcoidosis or something else, um, you will find a lot of trials. Some, because of COVID, as Frank said, are no, no longer going on. But um, try to be part of them. And Wendy, don't give up. Okay, so they won't take you because of the Remicaid? Just hang in there, look for another one. Keep looking, you got this. I know you do. <laughs> um, Wendy, you should be happy. You really should be happy that the doctors are you are showing other doctors about you. That's I know it's amazing, Frank. It's like it's so wild. You know, I come to FSR for help. I meet you and Kathy. I tell them I have the sarcoid group, all these doctors and everything, and they're like sarcoid, and they're like scared. You know, and then and then I'm telling my see. This is amazing thing. My doctor Mazawi that I have at Highland, I I usually do um, a soup kitchen every year for the poor um, through Wegman's uh, supermarket and Nancy B. B. Meyer, this lady. And I couldn't do it last year because I was in the hospital on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> um, and then um, my goal was to have another uh, one this year. That's I I'm, I'm reaching for another goal. But the but the interesting thing was is Dr. Mazawi's family have a huge um, you know soup kitchen in Florida, and she got interested in me and started a liking towards me. It's just you get these people that start you find something that you're alike like them, and they'll like how you guys found these um, senators and lobbyists um, for your new group that you're doing, you and Frank. Um, that um, have some kind of sarcoid within their family, uh, you know what I mean? Some kind of interest where they'll get interest in sarcoid. And these people are like from China, Tunisia, these students, and they're all learning from me. Yes, and that's so important, Wendy, and keep 
up. You know, one of the things that Rodney, I, I always think about how I'm speaking to somebody. I'm sorry for using you, Rodney, but I would use you even if you weren't there. So um, he is always a gentleman. He always has a soft spoken word for everybody. So that's one of the things I take into see to my doctors too. So he would always say, so how are you doing, Kathleen? So one of the things is, hi, Dr. Morgenthau, which I don't like the man. How are you doing today? And then he looks up from the screen and he goes, I'm okay. I'm like, I'm glad you're okay. And, you know, and it just takes them by surprise. So remember that, you know, we forget that human aspect. So every time I want to turn on the anger because I, I don't feel good, I, I, I just, just get to the freaking point and how are you going to fix me? No, it's not the way you go about it, Kathleen. <laughs> right, Rodney? That's, that's correct. <laughs> See? It's that that's southern that's charm. That's yes. Wendy, look, what you're what you doing and, and, and as far as the doctors learning from you and, you know, you teaching the doctor, that's exactly what we want you to do. Exactly. Randy, it was amazing. They come to my house. They oh, have well, four people that come to my house. I'm not that nice. <laughs> <laughs> but, they're in the backyard because of the COVID. They're in the backyard and we're like <laughs> far apart from each other. But they have they set up a camera and you can see them all in their classroom watching me. They're in a classroom together. Poor thing. Oh, I've done that. <laughs> but that's good. I had uh, my my. my first pulmonary doctor after i got diagnosed he's a retired army pulmonary doctor he was the head of pulmonary at walter reed in dc and he helped me start my support group here and he told the people that i was just like a little ant and like your what an ant a little ant the the, the insect he said that he couldn't get away from me. Every time he turned the corner, I was there. Because I was trying to talk him into being my medical advisor for the support group. Well, I finally got him and talked him into it. And he we would go around and speak to different groups and different uh different organizations. Uh, uh some is that like the FFR would put would put on down in New Orleans. And he would tell people that he learned more about sarcoidosis from me than he learned in a medical book. And it's, it's not because I'm smart, it's because I just was, was, you know, letting him know and relating to him the things that I was going through, what medications were working, what medications wasn't working, you know, what symptoms I was having at this time, I kept a log. You know, we found out, I, I got a coma from the pregnancy song that I was on, but we found out my pressure kept going up, you know, at certain times. I went back and I looked at my log and we found out that every time they would increase my prednisone dosage, the pressures in my eyes would go up. So that was a correlation, you know, between the prednisone and the pressures in my, in my eyes that caused my glaucoma. Well, when I got off the glaucoma. It's like, I, I mean, the prednisone, it's like I don't even have glaucoma anymore. I still have it, but my pressures are, 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 are normal. So, you know, things like that, we have to relate that kind of stuff to our doctor. You know, you might not like them, but you, you need to talk to them. And you talk to them in a way now. I mean, I, I've gotten out up and walked out of the office on some doctor. I told him, I want y'all to excuse my language. I said, I want you to watch me as I politely walk my black blank out of your door. You know, and they never saw me again because they didn't want to listen. They didn't want to learn. They thought they were God Almighty. A patient couldn't tell them anything. You know, as long as you can find a doctor that's willing to listen and learn from what you got, what's going on with your body, and you can relate that to them, that's the kind of doctor you want to be with. Mm -hmm. I agree, Rodney. Well, so oh. I hate to do this, but we're 10 minutes past, past our time here. No. <laughs> 10 minutes past oh, time goes past. <laughs> I know time goes by so quickly. Bumble party! Um, so, 
I'm going to be like, Wendy's uh, house. Wendy's out next one, anyway. Does anybody oh. know? I do. Hold on. Uh, today is a Thursday, so it's not until the beginning of next month. November 3rd. Yep. November I'll 3rd. Next one. And, and oh, you guys know, and Rodney, you're just hearing this for the first time, too. Uh, I haven't gotten in touch with you, but we're going to be doing another forum for mental health. Okay. And okay. this is a mental health forum for everybody. Uh, I'm working with NAMI, which is, they are. Um, what, I, I don't know exactly what it stands for again, uh, but they, they're all counselors and throughout the, throughout the world, actually, uh, they have counselors. They also have counselors that deal with either chronic diseases or rare chronic diseases. So we're trying to get them involved also. So they will um, be involved. They, they're picking out how many, uh, but we're gonna have them involved. And we're gonna you know reach out again to other people um, to get involved again. Pa patient caregivers too. Um, yeah, go ahead, Kathleen, I see your hands up. National Alliance on Mental Illness. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, we're gonna have patients, we're gonna have caregivers speak. We're gonna have, I'm gonna try to get the government, some government officials. And also just, um, I, I'd like to have people from um, different faiths, religious faiths. Um, to speak also. So we're going to work on that. Um, we're looking in December. Uh, Wait, how, can you get different, how can you have a whole bunch of different um, faiths? It's going to be hard. Well, it's easy. We have, uh, everybody gets their own time to speak. And, you know, as long as we respect everybody, you know, oh, boy. everybody. And that's all um, if so you don't, we, we can do it. You know, yeah. I mean, we have to just respect every, I mean, that's the whole idea about these forums. And that's why I had that forum, the first forum. It's just to respect what everybody's going through and actually learn and listen. Um, you know, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to even uh, approve of everything, but at least listen. And once you listen, you actually have to understand what, what the other people are going through and understand them a lot more. And that's all what these forums are about, is really to listen and understand. Um, so, but yeah, so we'll have another one um, in December. It's gonna be early December. We have a tentative date, but I'm not gonna say yet because we never, we never know because uh, the people who uh, wanna speak, they actually kind of pick out dates. <laughs> you know, right? But it's gonna be like the first or second week of December. But I will get in touch Can with you, Rodney. Can we get a rheumatologist on here? Uh, what, the third, the, the next one is probably going to be a doctor one, a, a straight straight doctor, um, you know, sarcoidosis doctors. So that's probably going to be our next one after that. But right now we're going to do the mental aspect first because with COVID, everybody's going, you know, um, going kind of crazy in their own little world. That's at this point. So crazy. <laughs> Right, I think uh, she was talking about for this far. Yeah, I know, but uh, that's what I'm saying. We're going to probably do that for the next one. Yeah. We're going to probably mm -hmm. have to adopt this for the next one. I really want to keep this focus on the mental health aspect itself because we're dealing with so much uh, oh, as right. patients right now. We're right. definitely uh, dealing too much. What's up? I think Wendy was talking about having a rheumatologist for the support group for that. Oh, for this support group? Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. I'm going to see. I'll talk to. A couple. Um, we had some on um, before. We had we had Dr. Sethaku from New Orleans. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah we had. Uh, um, I know she also talked to me about coming back again. So she said she had a, such a great time um, talking. So see, I'll check with her schedule because she's a sarcoidosis doctor. Uh, so yeah. that that would be even better than just having a rheumatologist here. <laughs> mm. um, yeah. But yeah. So. I'll definitely work on getting a doctor for our, one of these next month. I, it's, it's hard because we're getting near the holidays too. So um, even that's one of the reasons why I want to do the mental health because our holiday is going to be totally screwed up this year compared to normal. When you you know can't have a full family at Thanksgiving, you can't have a full family on Christmas. Blah 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 blah. So, but on that note, I want to let you guys go. Um, I will see you guys November 3rd, and we will talk then. And like I said, I will try to work on getting doctors 
in our in, the, in these meetings here. Okay. Well, everybody have a good night. Have be you safe, too, everybody. Have be a good safe. Bye bye. Bye. Good night. Bye.